Well, and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news tonight, a weather advisory is currently in place for our area. And with more on that and what we can expect overnight, let's head straight over to First Alert Meteorologist, or excuse me, weather, our First Alert weather forecast with Wendy. Wendy, just, just take it away. Sorry, I'm just long take intro. it away. I know, it's a very long intro. <laughs> well, I just have to let you know that right now there is a marine warning that has been issued by the National Weather Service, and it's in effect until 645, so another 15 minutes. But you'll be able to see the reason why, and that's this line of showers, thunderstorms that are getting ready to move across our area. A lot of lightning associated with this, strong gusty winds as well. There's the possibility of hail also with these storms as they start to move through. If you're getting ready to travel across the Sunshine Skyway Bridge, give yourself some extra time. We're already starting to see the rain moving in across the Tampa Bay area, and we're going to be seeing these showers getting closer and closer to us. We're expecting the rains here around 8 o'clock tonight. So far, nothing developing here right now, but you can see what's coming. So we are looking at these thunderstorms poised to come on through the area tonight, and it's going to be an all night slog. So we can expect to see showers, some heavy, some lighter rains coming on through thunderstorms, likely strong gusty winds. That's what's going to be what we're going to be seeing over the next several hours. So be prepared. We're going to keep you posted as to what's going on here from our studios. So we'll let you know what's going on every step of the way. Adam. All right, thank you very, mu very much, Wendy. And we're just a few weeks away from those uh, wooden stakes and orange tape along our beaches, otherwise known as sea turtle nesting season. Researchers will start patrolling for nests very soon. And as ABC 7's Erica Jackson shows us their plan to protect those sea turtle nests and eggs through the elements this season. Sea turtle nesting season officially starts on May 1st, but the animals can come on to local beaches to lay their eggs as early as the end of April. Sea turtles nest on uh, our southwest Florida beaches in, in notable numbers, especially our local loggerhead sea turtles. Moat Marine Laboratory is getting ready for what could be another record-breaking sea turtle nesting season. Biologists monitored more than 4,400 nests in 2017 between Longboat Key and Venice, with similar numbers the year prior. Crews in Venice are already preparing its beaches by tilling sand from the South Jetty to South Broward Park. So we want to try to keep the beach turtle friendly, but also not impede people's ability to enjoy it. But Moat can't prevent the inevitable, like the above average hurricane season projected by Colorado State University for this year. One year after the Sun Coast lost more than 150 nests to Hurricane Irma. Moat researchers say it's normal for storms to wash out a few nests, but it won't make a huge impact since sea turtles lay hundreds of eggs throughout the year along the beaches. Turtles have been living with storms for as long as storms have been around, um, and so they're pretty used to it. Moat researchers are using the upcoming weeks to spread awareness about nesting season, reminding beachgoers to stay away from nesting turtles, fill holes in the sand, and refrain from using bright lights. It's important that we keep the beaches dark while they're nesting, for instance, because we don't want the mother turtles, especially, or their hatchlings, to get disoriented. Florida Fish and Wildlife reports sea turtle eggs incubate in the sand for an average of two months, but it can take longer in colder sands, like on Siesta Beach, and quicker in warm, darker sands, like on Venice Beach. Reporting in Sarasota County, Erica Jackson, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Erica. And in, in an effort to raise money and awareness for that sea turtle conservation program, Moat Marine Lab hosting its annual run for the turtles earlier today on Siesta Beach. More than 900 people ran in the 32nd annual 5K and one mile fun run. Sea turtle conservation biologists have documented 90,000 crawls, protected more than 2 million hatchlings, and have tagged more than 5,000 turtles since the program began in 1982. And remember, for the latest news happening across the Sun Coast, plus uh, your up to the minute first alert forecast, head over to our news and weather app. You can find them both under WWSB or My Sun Coast in the App Store. A Sarasota rehabilitation home is in need of some major repairs after a telescopic forklift fell through its roof earlier this morning. It happened at Consulate Healthcare uh, Center on Fruitville Road between Honore and McIntosh. Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies responded just after 8 a.m. The Sheriff's Office says a crew is trying to lift shingles onto the roof. 
but overloaded the equipment, pulling that extended arm down and through the roof. Thankfully, those shingles fell into an empty hallway, but three special needs residents were trapped. All three were pulled to safety without injuries. The building, however, was left with major structural and water damage. Authorities in Germany are investigating a deadly car crash. A man driving into a crowd of people Saturday afternoon, killing two and injuring at least 20 others. As Jennifer Eccleston reports, a motive has not yet been released. The deadly attack took place in the popular Kippenkurl area of the city. The van driving into people sitting at an outdoor bar, enjoying the warm spring afternoon. I heard a loud bang, screaming, and then the police arrived and everyone was sent outside. Munster police tweeting that residents should avoid the area near the Kippenkurl pub due to the police investigation. Der Täter hat sich selbst im Fahrzeug gerichtet. Police saying the suspect shot and killed himself inside the vehicle. This is heavenly linked to terrorism. I think in short order they'll be able to figure that out. Or is this a, just a very disturbed person? Authorities do not believe there is a terrorist motive behind the incident. Rather, they believe the driver to be a middle-aged German man with psychological issues. When you throw in mental health possibilities, it still could be an extremist group like ISIS or Al-Qaeda, but it also could be a person who just paranoid, delusional. This attack similar to a 2016 incident when a stolen truck was driven into a crowd at a Christmas market in Berlin, killing 12 and injuring 56. It also comes on the one-year anniversary of an attack in Stockholm, Sweden, where another stolen truck was driven into pedestrians, killing five. While there have been fewer of these kinds of attacks in the U.S., eight people died when a man drove a van down a New York City bike path in October of 2017. Jennifer Eccleston, ABC News, London. And now to the deadly crash rocking the sports world overnight. Authorities say at least 15 people are dead and 14 others hospitalized after a semi truck crashed into a bus carrying a junior hockey team. It happened Friday in Saskatchewan, north of Tisdale. The team, made up of players younger than 21, was on its way to a game. Here is a photo of that wreckage taken when the sun came up this morning. Investigators say 28 people, including the driver, were on that bus. None of the victims have been identified, and authorities have not confirmed whether they were players or coaches. After a U.S. District Court judge ruled earlier this year that the uh, that Florida system for restoring felons voting rights was flawed on Friday, the state asked for that ruling to be placed on hold. Attorney General Pam Bondi asked the 11th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for a stay of the ruling. Right now, ex-felons have to wait at least five years before they can apply to have their voting rights restored. The U.S. District Judge has given state officials until April 26 to create a new process. State officials have appealed that ruling. Well, taxpayers have just a few days to file those tax returns by this year's April 17th deadline. Nearly one in three taxpayers wait until April to file, and many waiting until the very last minute. And if some of you are included on that list, don't stress. ABC7 spoke with a federally authorized tax expert about what to do if you still don't have all of your tax documents. The first thing we tell them to do is we try to get in touch with the, whoever generates those documents. And if we can't get in touch with them, then you can always file an extension. It's an extension to file, however, it is not an extension to pay. So you have to estimate what you think you might owe and pay it along with the extension form. If you do not file that tax return on time, there's a penalty which can be more than 10 times the cost of what your tax return might be. So it always makes sense if you're not ready to file to file that extension and then you have until October 15th. And we'll have more tips for taxpayers coming up tonight at 11 o'clock. Well, a beautiful day, free food and cops. The Manatee County Sheriff's Office hosting a community barbecue this afternoon in Palmetto. Families coming out to grab a hot dog or a hamburger at the Palmetto Youth Center. Deputies say events like these are so important because it gives the community an opportunity to speak with these employees in a more open and relaxed setting. We need to 
let the public know how, how badly we need them. We need to be partners in our community. And when it comes to solving crime, they're our biggest asset. And when they share that information with us, and we, and we get those bad guys off the street, and it's very important for, for all of us to, to, to work together to try to fight crime. Sheriff Rick Wells says the sheriff's office tries to hold a barbecue at the center several times a year. And today's event was also about trying to get potential players interested in trying out for the Palmetto Trojans football team. Type 1 is really hard. It's not easy. It's an everyday struggle. It's up and ups and downs, but it's all about, you know, coming out here and like being greater than the struggle. This morning, hundreds of people walked to raise awareness for type 1 diabetes. The Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation raising $223,000 at its walk at Nathan Benerson Park. That money will go towards the ongoing efforts to find a cure. As you're walking back and finally, after you've just finished doing the whole race, pictures of local children and people who are affected by type 1 diabetes. And it's just so meaningful to be coming back after raising the money and walking down that aisle, seeing the individuals who are being impacted by this. It just blesses your heart. ABC, ABC 7 was out and about at that event today trying to help that cause. Evening anchor Jacqueline Matter helping MC that event earlier today. Well, still to come here on ABC 7 with the Major League Baseball season in full swing. The question remains, what is the future of the Tampa Bay Rays? Next, ABC 7 takes it to the trough to speak with the team president. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Hi, I'm Stephanie Webb. And I'm Ray Collins. Construction on a major pipe project in Manatee County is set to resume. And we're going to tell you what areas will see more traffic as crews continue working. That's Monday on Good Morning Suncoast. John? In the upcoming work week, we'll have a series of little low-pressure areas that will move across the region, bringing us a chance of rainfall each day. We'll talk about that and give timing. Monday at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the U.S. military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. In life after the military, it's our duty as veterans to have each other's back. I'm retired Colonel Greg Gatson, and it's my mission to help you get the benefits and services you've earned. If you need to file a VA claim, remember these important steps. Submit an online claim through ebenefits.va.gov. Work with an accredited veteran service organization or VSO. And if you need to attend a VA claim exam, please go. Visit this website to learn what to expect. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. The Rays are off to another year, and so far it looks familiar. After over a week, it's a losing record and low attendance since opening day. And some wonder how much longer this can continue. 
ABC 7's Ray Collins went up to the TROP to talk with the team president. <laughs> Another season is underway at Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg. The fans are filing in, and they're hoping for another banner to hang in the left field rafters. This stadium was built back in 1986. They thought, build it and they will come. Well, it took 12 more years for the Devil Rays to be born, the expansion franchise. And now here in 2018, attendance is a serious issue. From what I hear is the stadium. Dennis Springer was a pitcher for the inaugural Tampa Bay Devil Rays 20 years ago. And on this night, he's among the former players being honored, including Tampa native and Hall of Famer, third baseman Wade Boggs. Got to focus. Got to focus. But outside of a few playoff runs, including an American League championship 10 years ago, there hasn't been a lot to cheer about here. And now there's talk of the team moving closer to downtown Tampa. Looking into Ybor City and new stadium. But none of this would be rumored if more of these seats were filled. The team has gone from an average of about 30,000 fans per game in 1998 to about 15,000 fans per game the past three seasons. The team president wishes more fans from the Sun Coast would take advantage of the stadium's relative close proximity. Many parts of it are closer uh, than Tampa. And so when we look at our fan base, we look at the entire Tampa Bay region, including Sarasota Manatee, and we think that if we can draw crowds from all around, we're going to be more successful. And to be more successful, the team is changing some things. From an outdoor recreation deck for fans before, during, and after the game to an enhanced food court. And we're going to cultivate it and make sure that it's going to be raised nation for a long time. Make no mistake, if they don't win, it is a shame, especially right now. There have also been rumors about the team maybe moving to Montreal. Wow, they will be cold that's if long, they go there. That's a long way. Oh, from wow. Sarasota, Manti area. Uh, we, uh, we have some changing weather in our area yeah, here we do. tonight. It's a little and different. Especially if you're heading out the door right now, and especially if you're moving anywhere north or going north, this is going to be a rainy night for you. You can see the clouds are gathering for us as they have been all day. We've been having strong, gusty winds throughout the day as well, but we haven't seen the rain show up on radar yet. It's all about to happen, though. We do have a marine warning that was put into effect from the National Weather Service a little bit earlier. We'll get to that in a second. Increased threat of thunderstorms, though, is what we can expect over the next several hours. And some of these storms could produce severe weather. So that's something we have to be on the lookout for. Hail is possible, frequent lightning, and also those strong, gusty winds. We've been seeing them coming in out of the south and southwest throughout the day today. And you can see this is the area where we've had the roughest weather so far, and that has been well to the north of our region. But this is where we're expecting to see the marginal possibility of some thunderstorms coming on through, producing severe weather. We're talking about wind gusts of over 55 miles per hour. Lightning, of course, that's something else that we're concerned with. And that watch has now expired. It expired at 645. It was a marine warning that was put into effect. And so it's just three minutes past that time frame. So this is what we're looking at right now is this is where we've had that band of rain and it's all coming on in with a cold front is producing a long line of thunderstorms right along this area that you can see. It's been holding together throughout the day, and we are looking at frequent lightning along that line. And right now, it's starting to affect the pan, uh, starting to affect the bridges, the Sunshine Skyway at this hour. And we're getting some showers that are strong right around that sun, Sunshine Skyway bridge. Anna Maria, you're starting to get affected. Holmes Beach, you'll be right there. Bradenton Beach, you'll start to see some of these heavy rains coming on through and we've got these showers that are going to be with us for quite some time as this cold front which is rather weak moves through the area then it comes back and stays with us as a stationary front it's going to be with us producing more storms and the possibility more of a showers for tomorrow morning as well we'll get rain throughout the overnight time period and then tomorrow we've got another 50% chance of rain back in the forecast, 30% chance during the latter part of the day. And so what we're expecting right now is that future radar showing those rains coming on in throughout the night 
and they're just going to be with us all night long. Some of the showers will be on the lighter side. Then we're going to get some heavier rains coming on through. So it's going to be like this for the rest of tonight. And then during the morning hours tomorrow, things start to clear out. And the winds have been particularly strong throughout the day, coming in out of the southwest. And you can see them at 15, 18 miles per hour. And this is true all the way down the coastline. So that's going to be part of what we're going to be experiencing. We got up to a high of 81. Despite all of the clouds, 64 was the overnight low. And right now you can see those temperatures still in the 80s because the rain really hasn't hit. But where it is falling, we're going to start to see those temperatures drop very quickly. And of course, as you can see for boaters tomorrow, winds will be out of the northwest, shifting around as that front has moved down to the south, 10 knots, seas two to three feet. And we are expecting to see cloudy conditions for tomorrow with thunderstorms possible with a 50% chance of rain, 69 degrees for the overnight low tonight. And over the next several days, we are going to be looking at a 50% chance of rain for tomorrow. We're going to lower those chances for Monday back up to a 60% chance on Tuesday. So we've got good possible rain chances and we need the rain all the way through Wednesday. Adam. Now, sports. Remember all that excitement when the Rays won their opening day game? Well, nine days and six losses later, it's still their only win of 2018. That lonely win was against the Red Sox, and things were looking good against Boston earlier today. Brad Miller putting the Rays up 2-0 in the first inning with this double right here. But the Red Sox counter right away in the bottom half of the inning with four runs. Two off this Xander Bogarts double and Bogarts would return in the bottom of the second inning. Bases loaded. Coming up here in a minute, there it is, and he delivers a grand slam. It's a career best six RBIs for Bogarts today. Race starter Jake Faria doesn't even make it two innings in the 10-3 loss. His season ERA balloons to over 14. It was a rainy start in Augusta to round three of the Masters. Like showers forecasted through much of the day up in Georgia, not helping Tiger Woods, who started the day four over and finds the bunker on the first hole. He would finish with a bogey on the first two holes. And here on hole number 12, where he had hit it into the water twice already during this tournament, he hits the green instead. And he lets out a nice smile, kind of plays to the crowd. He would miss that birdie putt finish where he started at four over and here's a look at your leaders after round three it's Patrick Reed still out in front but Rory McIlroy making up some ground just three shots behind more to come here on ABC 7 stay with us pretend or teaches us rules or to be creative. Actually, every kind of play is important because different kinds of play give us different kinds of skills. Help us mix up the ways we play. Okay, class dismissed. Now go play. They are the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen. But what does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Give today at force.uso.org. Each day, researchers make discoveries that bring us closer to the moment when all cancer patients can become survivors. Their progress is made possible with the help of clinical trials. Clinical trials are the brightest torch researchers have to light their way towards better treatments. And if you've been diagnosed with cancer, they may be your brightest ray of hope. Speak with your doctor and visit standuptocancer.org slash clinical trials to learn more. Together, we can stand up for all of us. All hands on 
on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Growing up, my mom was afraid of the water, something she did not want me to feel. So I enrolled Missy in swim lessons. It changed my life. Missy Franklin. And now you can do the same for someone that you love. There's nothing more precious than your child's well-being. So act now before it's too late. Make a splash! I'm glad I did. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Visit USASwimmingFoundation.org to find, get, or give a swim lesson. Keep up with the Suncoast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. Well, many police departments utilize a canine unit, but officers in Troy, Michigan, say they're <laughs> looking for a feline in their ranks. On Friday, those officers brought in what they call candidates for the first police feline. <laughs> That event was the first round of selections for a police job, but even if they don't get recruited into the line of duty, those kittens will be up for adoption into some loving families. Oh my goodness. I'm curious. Aren't they gorgeous? What the Look advantage at them. <laughs> of, the, of the police feline might be as opposed to a Just canine. Just keeps everybody calm. Just keeps everyone calm. You think they could take down a robber or something or a burglar? <laughs> Just, just a note, if you're in northwestern Manatee County right now, you're starting to feel some of those showers and thunderstorms. They're starting to come on through, especially across the Sunshine Skyway. It's very gusty out there as well. So just be careful if you're driving north, because all of this is coming towards the south and east. All right, take cover, and we'll see you back here at 11 o'clock. Thanks to all of you who participated in ABC 7's Caribbean Cruise Giveaway Contest. Join us as we celebrate our grand prize winner, Joy Shvekowski of Northport. Married for 13 years in June, Joy and her husband, Don, are excited to celebrate their anniversary on a spectacular seven-night luxury Caribbean cruise for two. Congratulations, Joy and Don. Bon voyage. ABC 7, we're here for you. Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks, but you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter and take control today. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Maybe you can make retirement happen. After all, you made her college years happen. Watch out. Opening that education savings account when she was little. Spearheading a campus tour. And another, and another, and another, and another. Bam! Deciphering financial aid. She was like, what? But now she's like, yeah! you waste planning for college. Now get the tips you need to get on track at aceyourretirement.org. Invest in Kids is a $7.5 million project to build a new Boys and Girls Club in South Manatee County. I'm Caleb Grimes, and I was a club kid. It's where I learned important life lessons, leadership, integrity, responsibility, and baseball. Thousands of kids attend the Boys and Girls Clubs, and after years of use, their club is slowly falling apart. Help us invest in kids. Make your donation today.
ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights.